Hello and welcome to Siobhan Talks Periods. My name is Siobhan Carroll. I'm a naturopath and a herbalist and I'm passionate about periods. Today we are going to look at how to track our menstrual cycles. So you may have heard that tracking your menstrual cycle is important for getting pregnant um, or perhaps for not getting pregnant. <laughs> um, and you might just be sick of getting your period, um, getting caught by surprise each month, not knowing when it's due, you know, whatever reason you want to track your menstrual cycle. Um, in this vlog, I'm going to cover three of the simplest ways to chart your menstrual cycle. So the first thing to do is to track your menstrual cycle length. Um, it's the most basic, the very simplest way of tracking your period. Um, and you can take note of the first day of your cycle and just write it down. Um, what they call day one, um, it's, a, it's a cycle, so there isn't really a start and an end necessarily. Um, you know, a lot of us still feel like that period does feel like the end of the cycle, um, kind of like winter. Um, but medically speaking, they call that kind of first day when you, you need to use a tampon or a pad or your cup when you're kind of bleeding a bit heavily. That's the first day of your period, day one. So um, some people do have some spotting um, just before their period, um, but that's very likely. And um, we'll talk about that in another vlog. So day one um, of the menstrual cycle would be the first day that you're having that sort of substantial bright red bleed. So to track this, you simply just you know write it down on a calendar, um, in a diary, on um, a menstrual tracking chart. There's loads of those you can download on the internet. On an app, there's loads of those too nowadays. Um, and yeah, you just write in the days that you're bleeding and then you do the same for your next period. So then doing this after say three cycles, you get this sort of um, like big picture view of your menstrual cycle um, of how long it is um, and how long you're bleeding and things like that. Um, you know, this might be enough for you. Um, like if your cycle is regular, you don't experience period related symptoms and you just want to know when your next period is due, then this is a great way just to track it. However, that being said, there's so much more magic to um, become aware of when you start tracking you know, different phases of your cycle, the seasons of your cycle, and as well different symptoms that pop up each month. So um, we will talk about that another time. Um, but the next thing that we're going to look at in terms of the basics of tracking your cycle is how to tell if and when you've ovulated. So the second thing we track is our basal body temperature. And um, the basal body temperature is the body's internal temperature. It's the lowest temperature uh, when we're sleeping. And this rise is about halfway through our cycle when we ovulate. So by checking our temperature every day, um, we can see um, if and when we've ovulated. So it's um, it's obviously important to know if you are ovulating if you're trying to get pregnant and um, if there's no egg released then there'll be no pregnancy. Um, that's actually how also how a lot of hormonal birth control methods work and um, they suppress ovulation. But that being said ovulation is really important um, for our hormonal health um, and our overall health. It's not just about getting pregnant. <laughs> um, when the egg is released during ovulation our body then produces uh, progesterone, which is a calming hormone. Um, it's really one we don't want to be without um, by not ovulating. It does so many great things in our bodies. Um, and ovulation is also a really important sign from our bodies to let us know if we're healthy. Um, most natural practitioners like myself um, and even some mainstream medical bodies like the American Association of Gynecology, they recognize now that our, our menstrual cycle is a vital sign along with like temperature, blood pressure, heart rate and um, these kind of vital things that give us a real idea of how our health is. Menstruation is a part of that um, and og ovulation then is a key part of the menstrual cycle. So if you're not ovulating, um, it could be a sign of PCOS, of thyroid issues, and um, it could be stress related, weight related. There are like there are lots of different reasons, um, but it is a sign that something is off and that your body needs support. So how to track your basal body temperature? You need a thermometer. Um, you need to measure your temperature first thing in the morning when you wake up. So um, before you check your phone or have a glass of water or go to the loo, you check your temperature. Um, ideally as well, your th thermometer will have two decimal points. So say like you'll see 36.25, not just 36.2 um, <clears throat> or 36.3. I don't know how rounding works. <laughs> the five was a bad example. Um, but anyway, your temperature will rise from 0 0.3 to 0 0.6 degrees in centigrade after you ovulate. So um, you just basically take your, your thermometer and you place it on top of your phone or on your alarm clock if you don't um, keep your phone in your bedroom um, or um, beside your glass of water, you know, whatever you need to do to remember to, um, to measure first thing in the morning. 
Um, I have a two-year-old daughter and she knows to take the thermometer and stick it in my mouth if she wants me to get up in the morning. Um, and then you just take your temperature and you write it down and then you get up. Um, you'll see that 0 0.3 to 0 0.6 um, increase. So say going from like 38, 38, 5.8 to 36.3 or something like that, you know. Um, and that's the sign that you're ovulating and you're getting that kind of surge of progesterone. Um, it is also good to note that if you've been sick, um, if you've slept less than usual, if you've drank alcohol, um, if you're in perimenopause, these are all things that can also change your temperature. So if you do have a kind of really unusual temperature that you wouldn't expect, um, it might be one of those reasons. So um, you would disregard those in terms of tracking your, your wave of temperature in your, in your cycle. <clears throat> So then the last thing we'll look at today is cervical mucus. So um, if you don't know, we have this very normal fluid that's produced in our cervix and it changes throughout our cycle. Um, it's called cervical mucus. Um, when you start to take notice of this um, and to track how it changes, you'll start to notice this mu mucus as well has a cyclical nature too. So you can start to analyze this just by kind of noticing the color, the texture on your underwear um, or on your toilet paper. You can also use your fingers and um, that way you can kind of get a feeling for the different textures and um, which we'll go through now. So after your period finishes, there's little to no discharge, um, but then sort of halfway through your follicular phase between your period and ovulation, the body produces more estrogen um, and that makes the mucus thicker. It's sort of creamy and um, becomes a bit thinner and um, it can be quite um, profuse. You can get a sort of a damp feeling um, in your underwear. Um, and then when we ovulate, the fluid becomes more like egg white, they call it usually. It's kind of clear and stretchy and there can sometimes be a lot of it. And that's when you know you're fertile. Um, although your fertile window can be before that too, because sperm can live in our uterus for up to five days. So this isn't a good method for um, avoiding pregnancy. Um, it can be a bit unclear sometimes, depending on when your ovulation is. So um, temperature is more ac accurate if you want to um, track your... Um, if you want to use it as a contraceptive, um, maybe an app like um, Natural Cycles, that's an FDA approved form of contraception using this fertility awareness method, um, but definitely research it more and make sure you know what you're doing if you're using it for contraceptive purposes. So <clears throat> then after you ovulate, um, we get progesterone and that kind of gives us this thicker, drier kind of mucus um, when, we're, when we're less um, fertile again. So you can write this down on your chart, um, your menstrual tracking chart, on your calendar, your diary. Um, it's just a great way to, to get to know your body a bit better. And you can see if your temperature rises and the egg white mucus is around the same time, um, you'll know that's your ovulation time. Um, it's just a great way to gather some more awareness about yourself, your body and your menstrual cycle. Um, Dr. Aviva Ram, who I absolutely love, if you uh, don't know her, definitely check her out. She says that um, tracking your menstrual cycle is the best me search you can do. Um, and I love that and I agree. Um, uh, so yeah, of course, there's other things you can check and take note of, specifically like emotions and um, pain, symptoms like that and cramps, um, how these kind of fit in around your cyclical um, uh, menstrual cycle. Um, but we'll talk about that in a future blog. Um, first, I want to know, what do you think? Do you track your menstrual cycle? Um, what method works best for you? And if not, um, are you going to give it a try? I, um, I really hope you found this video helpful. Um, I, if you want to get more of these videos, please subscribe on YouTube or if you're on Instagram, follow my page, Siobhan Talks Periods and add it to your favorites. And if you have any questions, let me know. Um, if there's any topics you want me to cover in future, just please get in touch. Um, and I look forward to talking to you all soon.